This backyard is sure coming along. If you all remember the previous year, last year, I was working on a big mound by myself out here. If you click up in the corner of this video, you'll see the, the link to that video if you want to watch what it used to look like. All right, you see this big, beautiful oleander tree that's all overgrown? My husband's going to trim it down to look closer to that. So this is your before shot before he gets to that. We're gonna call this the during shot because it's not quite done yet. Look at all those beautiful flowers and things cut down. He pulled out this stump. You, you did all these things back here? All these trees that were growing alongside the house? We didn't get a before shot of that. They kind of look like this over here. Yeah, but even that's true. That's what it looked like all alongside the other side of the house. There's my shed. Behind your shed. It's a jungle back here. Wow. We've got a lot of overgrown stuff. All right, so over here behind this shed, all of this is gonna change here soon. See how it slopes? So it's probably gonna get evened out and cleaned up. Same with this, right? Yeah. And the goal was maybe to build something right here. So we'll see if I use this footage. That's the swamp. <laughs> I want an alligator just so I can put it in the swamp. I want a pet alligator. <laughs> and this is the after. We've got a lot of that cleaned up. But it's going to get more cleaned up. Progress, progress. On the power and control wheel, there's a tactic called coercion and threats. Coercion is a way in which a man gets a woman to do what he wants her to do or stop doing something that he doesn't want her to do. And he'll use something that the woman values. If you don't do what I say, then he's gonna take some artifact that she has, uh, maybe a, a family heirloom, and threaten to, to destroy it if she doesn't submit to him. So this is how threats and coercion work together against women. And this is how one of the ways in which he uses to get his partner to submit. Isolation is another tactic on the power and control wheel. And when I listen to men talk about isolating their partners, there's a lot of ways that they talk about going about this particular tactic. The ultimate goal is to keep her from hearing voices other than his. So he's got this way he wants her to think. He's got this way he wants her to feel, things he wants her to do. If she comes in contact with members of her family, her friends, they'll have other ideas about what she should be doing. And he doesn't want those ideas in her head. He wants his ideas in her head. So he finds ways of isolating her. So it might be something as, as uh, subtle as creating an argument every time she wants to go out and, and see her family or friends. So that it gets to the point where it's just so hard to even go out that I just quit. I'll just stay in because I don't need another argument. I don't need a bunch of yelling. I don't need something broken. I don't need to be threatened. I'll just stay home. I'll just submit to avoid the consequence. It could be something as something like checking her cell phone so she doesn't have any privacy so her her facebook account her email her phone all has to be 
she has to give him all the passwords so that he can look and make sure she's not talking to anybody who he doesn't approve of. All of these things are, are again, are this, this, this notion that if I can control how she thinks, then I can control her. And the more contact she has outside of me, the less likely I'm gonna be able to maintain that control. One of the beliefs that drive isolation is that you're mine. You, 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 get, you have to do what I want you to do because I own you. And, and it's interesting to talk to men about how they get this notion of ownership. Different men have different lines for it. So one guy might say, it's when she got pregnant. Another guy might say, it's when I got married to her. Another man might say, it's when she moved away from her family with me. They all have this different line that they, now she's mine. But once she's mine, now I get to control how she thinks, how she feels, and how she acts. And the best way to do that is to isolate her from anybody but me. On the power and control wheel, one of the tactics is male privilege. And if there's anything that drives all of this abusive behavior that we've been talking about, this is it. It's the notion that as a man in relationship with a woman, I believe that I get to dominate you, control you, use physical violence if necessary to get you to submit to me. Because literally the privilege goes right to the core of that man's identity. And he will fight for that, to hold on to that, um, as if he's literally fighting to hold on to himself. If we're looking for something that's behind why men beat women into submission, it is this notion of privilege, of entitlement, of dominance that they have uh, and that they believe they get to execute uh, with the woman in their lives. They don't believe this about other people in their lives. So for example, they can go down and sit down with a coworker or their boss and negotiate. So it's not like they don't have the skill to negotiate. They simply just don't believe that I have to negotiate with her because she's mine and I get to tell her what to do. That's the thinking at its fundamental core when we work with men who batter, that we're trying to help them see what it leads to and what they lose and what happens to her when they execute it.